Thanks. Uh, so, first point here is it's it's more than me. So, I mean, Solar Ripsy, everybody says, you know, it's Dave, Dave doing great work. I have a ton of friends. I, I think maybe a quarter of people in this room have been up on a roof with me or done a, done a structural analysis or hosted a website or something like that. So, and it kind of the, the, the theme of my talk today is uh, I'm just going to uh, kind of go through a history of Solar Ripsy. And then I'm going to hit some highlights. I'm going to show you some things that worked that didn't work. Um, and I encourage you to ask you know, a couple of questions as we go along. If you have something that you know, popped in your head, we're going to save 10 minutes at the end to, uh, to have more questions if you want. But uh, we're going to just kind of go through history, give you some ideas. And I'm hoping that some of these ideas will stick in your head and you can clone this you know, in your own community. And kind of a theme I have going is do something and then talk about it. That, that's, that's kind of the thing. And, and part of that is uh, Steve Pierce right now in the back. You'll see the camera up there. We're live streaming this to a, a Nibs Lady Facebook page. And so that uh, hopefully people you know, in the room will hear this, but people outside the room, it'll be recorded. And now this is another piece of material that I can then go out and educate people with. So that's kind of the thing. So whenever you do something, take lots of, lots of pictures, Put it on a website or a Facebook page and just keep getting that message out. And the more we do that, the better we're off we are. All right, so I'm Dave. My day job is as a computer engineer, and this is all my hobby. So I don't I don't listen to sports and I don't play golf. Uh, and instead of playing, instead of buying a golf club, I'll buy a school of wire and help my neighbor put up solar. Uh, and people find this amazing. So solar empty is not a 501c3. Not a nonprofit, not even incorporated. We're nothing more really than a website. Uh, but we're 13 years old. We're talking to Nipsey from about zero to over a megawatt of solar power in the city limits. Uh, we've won several awards uh, and we've raised almost a quarter million dollars. That's, that's pretty cool for not being a nonprofit. And that's kind of my model. Like I kind of got started on this model when I, uh, very early on, I got invited to go to. Uh, a greenie convention, right? And it's in Livonia, and I'm sitting around at this table, and everybody at this table drove an hour to get there. And I'm looking around this conference room, there's not a compact person light in sight, and we're listening to some guy who just flew in from California, and I'm telling everybody at this table, I was like, we're like so in the hole right now. Because we're all sitting here listening to this stuff, and everybody at the table already knew what the guy was going to talk about, more or less. Uh, so that's when I kind of made, that was my aha moment, where I said, I'm not going to any more meetings, I'm just going to try and do it. And so that, that's got to be my motivation. Just put it on your house, you know, help your neighbor put it on their house, help the school put it on their house, on their school. And that's kind of, that's kind of been the, the motivating factor for all this. So I, I built this timeline, uh, you know, the blue bar is time. You'll see, uh, I kind of did an accumulation of dollars over time. And, and the bottom number is 0 to 79 points. Uh, the lower numbers are people. So I've given, and friends of mine have given, about 230 solar presentations, all from one on ones to one to like, I think my biggest is a couple hundred. And, that, and that's something that, that I'm kind of proud of is that I just try and keep reaching the finish. So over the last 13 years, you know, I've had face-to-face -face conversations with over 5,000 people and convincing them how to do this. So that, that's, a, that, that's another way, just to keep educating people about it. All right, so uh, it's 2005 back in history. Uh, the local food co-op is two blocks that way. The manager says, uh, let's put solar on the co-op. I was like, sure, I'm already there doing you know, electrical work for them anyways. And uh, she shows me this grant. It's not a grant. I do a web search. We find a grant from the state of Michigan. Thank you, uh, the Energy Department. Uh, and lo and behold, how many people write their first grant and win? <laughs> Never happens. We get six thousand dollars to play with. I don't know how to do this, and you can tell I don't know how to do this because I. <laughs> <laughs> These are. This is two thousand five. This is a thousand dollars. <laughs> but we do it, right? And, uh, and, we, and part of it, we have to put together a presentation. So the presentation version, you know, 1.0 gets built, and the 
the ball is rolling, right? So I didn't like look for this, this kind of like came to me. And so I'm giving a presentation, and, uh, and that's how it starts. Okay, a year goes by, we finish our first project. Uh, things are good, I think, in the you know what I'm doing, right? And I just call up the mayor, I says, I want to put some solar panels on City Hall. And City is the, Ips I'll tell you, Ipsilani is the best city for doing stuff. We're just small enough that people kind of don't care. <laughs> and we're big enough that people kind of care, you know? And uh, I'm like, you know, Mayor, I want to put the panels on back at City Hall. He's like, knock yourself out. <laughs> you can do it, you know, no problem. And it took me three years. <laughs> three years to convince the historic district that uh, they, they're not going to damage the building, that they're not going to look ugly. Uh, you know, years to find the money, and uh, it, it was interesting. 2007, you can see we're kind of getting a slow start here. So we actually raised uh, $1,000 from uh, neighboring people. Uh, and then these solar bucks. I, I quickly became called the solar guy, right? And uh, I had another friend who had a grant to get solar presentation, and he's going to get like 20 bucks ahead for everything he does. He says, Dave, I'll send contact to you. Anybody you give a solar talk to, I'll give you $10 ahead. Just keep your name and address on a, on a form. And I was like, $10 ahead? Sign me up, you know? <laughs> and I was just grabbing people anywhere I can, get them in a room and talk about solar. So we actually raised about 10 grand. Uh, just doing solar talks, and I fixed my $4 mistake. <laughs> we added another panel, and, and we were making money for uh, for the city hall project. And then, uh, lo and behold, we write uh, two more grants. Uh, there might have been one in there that we missed. But this was kind of funny in that uh, we submitted a grant for $36,000, and before we knew if this would hit, another one came out. And so we submitted a second one, and lo and behold, we went both, and all of them going, oh my god. I gotta get these projects done, and this is just a hobby, right? This is not my, this is not my day job. And so we, we expand the uh, the co-op a little bit more, and then uh, you know, lo and behold, they say, "Why well, we want to replace the roof?" So, you, so I, I built it, expanded it, expanded it, took it apart, and put it back together again, to put a white roof on it. Uh, so I, people ask how many solar projects I've done. I said, "Well, can I count the ones I redo?" <laughs> <laughs> The city project gets done. This was kind of cool. This was expensive. We had all volunteers, though. We rented a 40-foot lift to get this all up here. And I'm just amazed at how many people. Anybody drive in on that exit from exit 183? Anybody see this? <laughs> the historic district gave me all kinds of grief, and nobody knows it's up there. <laughs> I, I want to put a big arrow, you know? <laughs> And then we got the other grant was to put uh, panels in the bakery. And uh, Chuck Hoke helped me on these. And then when I was at, you know, starting and I was an idiot, I said, well, I'll just save money and I'll build my own racks. And so I'm designing racks, doing structural analysis. You know, this is your rack. It takes forever to build. And you save penny. Now, forget it. Just buy a commercial rack. Moving along. And then uh, the next kind of big thing that happens here is uh, the, the website. So we don't uh, have a lot of uh, solar projects, so I'm trying to figure out things to do, right? So you want to do something and talk about it. And I'm a geek, I'm, I play with computers, and so I, I learned about KYZ pulse out, uh, oh man, pulse output on, me on electric meters, and I talked, I actually found friends at GPE, and they said, yeah, you just get this kind of meter when there's a relay in it, it turns on and off every time the platter goes around. So I write a program, and I'm excited, because I can now, have my own free program to monitor utility meters. And uh, I hook it up, and so I can now make graphs of power coming in, power going out, power being generated, all for free because I use these uh, you know, junky, you know, $20 laptops that are really old. And then I found uh, from a friend of a friend to a professor to a, a grad student, uh, Nick Eastep, and he built this website. Because I just had, I'm just an engineer, right? I just have streaming numbers. I think that's great. And he's, like, and he's like, well, you know, you should put that in a graph. <laughs> and put it on a website. And so that's when Solar Ipsy got born. And again, so another message here is I get lucky. So this, this kid from Eastern Michigan, uh, I don't know how many hours he put it. And he's just going nuts. And he's doing pie charts for me. We got this little map going. You click on one of these buttons, you see pictures, graphs. Uh, and I was thinking about this last thing. There was a period of time. 
where him and I would be talking, you know, between the hours of like 11 o'clock to 2 a.m. And as long as I kept him excited, uh, he was doing free work. And it was, uh, <laughs> he's now working for Google, doing Google Wallet. So he's, uh, so it's pretty impressive. We're starting to get some traction, right? So the solar guy is popular now. People, I'm, I'm kidding out to the community. People are getting excited about this. And uh, Concentrate Media came and says, Dave, we want to make a video about what you're doing. Sure. <laughs> That's another one of my messages. Don't say no. And uh, so this guy comes out for a day, you know, it puts together this three minute video. Uh, and I thought it was pretty cool. The only thing I hate about videos is that uh, all the numbers in here are wrong because solar is accelerating so fast that all the prices and sizes are all, and they get dated really quick. So if you make videos, make one every year. Uh, and then I'm convinced that this thing got out on the web, got some traction, and then the uh, SEI, I keep forgetting your name, it's the Solar Energy Industry Association or something like that. I'm convinced that they found this video and said, hey, we want you in our video. And so they came with a crew and they did this solar road trip. And uh, so we're in that video. And, and so we're just getting more and more uh, traction. How we call it. Uh, and you can see we're not doing a lot of installations there. And, uh, but we're trying to get the, the word out. And another, another one of my messages is to um, always have uh, projects in your pocket. I really find that to be really useful. So here was another example. This is Adam's school and uh, another person running a grant. And uh, it's coming to the end of their grant period and they have like a couple of dollars. The thing is, is they got to spend it, you know, now. they got to spend it in a month. And I already had a relationship with the school. I had a relationship with the principal. I already had kind of, you know, worked out a design. And so when he says, Dave, you know, you got something I can do in the next month, I said, right here. And so that's another thing you always have. Always have two or three projects, different sizes in your pocket, already designed out, kind of specced out with the price, uh, so that when, when an opportunity knocks, you can just have it done. This was kind of interesting. This contractor rebuilt the, the, uh, the awning and actually mounted the solar panels and just kind of stuck it up on there all at once. He rebuilt everything at home. And bolted it to the wall and it's done. Kind of and then this was the amazing point. And so I, things are rolling around. I get a phone call from the co-op and it says, uh, hey, Dave, because I don't put my phone number on any place so people have to find me at the co-op. They said, Google call. And I was like, yeah, right. <laughs> And they're like, no, no, here's a, somebody's name and a phone number. So I call them back, and they want to make commercials. They, they're making commercials about search, you know, how people use uh, Google search to solve problems. Man, about six months on the phone, talking with them, and then talking with another person, talking with a producer, talking with a director, talking with film crews. And they're like, all right, we like your story. They come. I find this is just amazing. I, I'm like, again, I'm just like a lucky guy. And I think it's because I get this presence out there and people find it. So you have to make your solar community visible to the public. And so they come for three days. <laughs> and uh, we're going all over the city, we make this cool video. And uh, they're saying, okay, we're gonna put this on our website. You know, we'll see what happens. And you know, maybe it'll go on TV. So I'm at home, I, I have little kids at this time and uh, my wife and I decided not to have a TV, right? So we're at home and uh, phone rings and it's uh, my nephew and he says, Uncle Dave, why are you on TV? <laughs> During the Lions game, you know, I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and then the next day I got an email from a guy in Toronto, one of my friends, a co-worker in Toronto, not Toronto, uh, Vancouver. And he says, Dave, I don't know, I was either drunk last night or something, <laughs> but I swear I saw your face on my TV. <laughs> so they made the video, they pushed it on the TV, um, I went from one or two hits a day on the solar energy website to uh, 10,000 hits. <laughs> and Steve Kirst is uh, hosting our website, and very sh the next day we crashed his server. <laughs> and we're all like, oh my god, you know, this is the time that you really want to be visible, and this is when you can get some new good traction. Nick, I'm like, Nick, I need your help, I need your help. And in three days, he ports the whole website from a Windows-based system to a Linux-based system to a server that's bigger with more bandwidth. And uh, at the end of this, uh, we were like a quarter million hits on, on the website, or on this video or something. 
And now I'm getting phone calls from Nevada and uh, God knows where. And so I, that's one other thing is, you know, never say no. I, I can email different all the time. Right? I kind of save them for night. And that, every night I'm answering emails, you know, how do I do this? Well, check out this website or something like that. So just kind of keep getting the message out. Uh, I'm doing more talks. Uh, I too use, I, I'm doing talks at the university. They're putting it on iTunes University channels. Uh, and then this is another kind of crazy thing. So I always find it hard to say, I'm going to do a solar presentation and try and get people to come to a solar presentation. People rarely come to a solar presentation. But if I have a Kiwanis Club or a Lions Club or a Boy Scout troop that got meetings every month, they're dying for speakers. And there's, a, there, there's an easy 30 or 40 people there. Or 20 people, whatever. And so don't try to bring people to you. Go to where the people are. Don't preach to the choir. I thought, you know, this is kind of funny. So everybody I'm talking to, they already knows about solar. So you want to try to go to places that don't know about solar and tell them about solar. So I'm, I'm designing a system for a friend. This is going to go in his backyard. And uh, we design it. We order all the parts. And it's going to be delivered in August. And I'm thinking about this. And I was like, hey, Stephen. You mind if I borrow it for the weekend? <laughs> and he's like, sure. So Thursday afternoon, I think a bunch of holes, we, 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 we assemble this, this six kilowatt system in the middle of the park. Uh, I'm not sure if I asked the city for permission. <laughs> <laughs> this, I, I make a little like a uh, two by four wall here. I buy a, uh, an old utility meter. I stick it on the back. I put a, I actually put a, breaker panel on the inside. This is uh, an outlet that's part of the park. And I basically uh, plug into the uh, to the park's electrical system. And and so that turns my inverter on and I'm working I'm, I'm, and I'm live. And I actually turned out uh, powering like 10% of the, of the festival with, with this array. And uh, Sunday afternoon, we took it apart, took the court to Stephen's house, and then put it in his backyard. <laughs> you think that's funny? The next year, he's got it on his house. And I got a rack, and we had a line on another project. We we're going to use those panels. And at the last minute, we couldn't get those panels. So I have a rack with no panels. And I was like, hey, Stephanie, why are you going to your panels again? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, so we go to his house, we unplug everything, grab all his panels, put it back on the rack, and did a different rack, and put them back on his house. It's great. And then we did it a third year, and then I was like, this is crazy. But, but this is great because. Uh, thousands of people come. I mean, this is a big festival. Steve was there. I mean, we had, we had three or four people. I think I, st I talked nonstop for the whole three days. And it was, uh, it, it was amazing. And having something like this, uh, getting a big banner was also good. And it attracted people up. So this is a good thing to do uh, you know, if you have the energy to do it. So another opportunity comes up. Uh, University has this TEDx uh, thing. They say, uh, you know, you can apply. I, so I applied and I got in. I've actually been trying to get into the TEDx Detroit now for the last uh, maybe five years. I haven't been able to get into that one. But again, this was great because not only was I able to give my talk to a couple hundred people, I got good positive feedback, but they recorded it. This was a very high production quality video that I, I showed everybody. So if anybody, you know, says, hey, you know, can you tell me a little bit about solar? 16 minutes, I just pointed to this video, and, it, and, and it's good to have things like this. And these are all on, on the website, and they're all shareable, so if you know, anybody wants to use them, go right ahead. Anybody remember we went, uh, we were trying to do 25% uh, percent renewables by 25, and it failed miserably. Uh, so the uh, environment mission came, and they said, well, geez, instead of doing this top-down approach, let's do a bottom-up approach. Let's look around and see who's doing things in solar. And they said, oh, the solar industry looks cool. And so they come and they twist my arm. They say, Dave, you need to put a, uh, you need to put 2,000 solar roofs in this lane. <laughs> what? <laughs> so I do a little bit of math, and I was like, OK, there's 4,000 houses, you know. Uh, let's just lower that number a little bit. <laughs> we agreed on 1,000, and uh, they, they helped me. This is kind of funny, and I hope no one from the environment of uh, Michigan is here. But they, they do all this work. They, they put together this, this uh, 
this report, they hold this meeting, this kickoff thing, you know, in planning. The, uh, they work with me to get the city council to pass a resolution and say we're going to go for a thousand roofs. They're not going to give us any money or any help. They're just saying, yeah, hey, knock yourself out. Uh, that all happens. Everything's passed. We're on our way. Everybody I worked with at Envir Michigan leave. <laughs> and they never talked to me again. <laughs> and then I got a call like a couple of years ago. I said, hey, what about this thousand roof that you're going to have? Oh, well, I don't know anything about it. <laughs> But we're going for it. We're going for a thousand rows. Uh, here's another kind of crazy idea. I was like, I do these projects on the co-op. Co-op's got a flat roof. Uh, and it's like the city hall. Nobody knows we're there. And I start reading about the QR tags, and I'm like, let's do this. So we, we, build a, we, we build a QR tag, and if you point your phone at it and click it, it'll take you to a video of the solar panels on the roof. So we have a flat roof and you can't see anything. You just, you tag this, you put this on the, the front of the building, and it tells you what's up on the roof, and then it takes you to the solar energy website. I thought that was a great idea. Then we decided to put them on post, put them out in front of people's houses. And uh, so today's funny story is, uh, I'm doing a project right now on, on Maple Street. I'm not even done, and the lady says, so when do I get my post with my tag? So these are actually easy to make, but a piece of plastic, you can go to any of these baker shops. I have a, a college friend who, uh, who's, who burns them on a laser rod at your, uh, so they're, they're a couple bucks and they're, they're easy to do. So this is another good way of making things visible. I have one in front of my house, actually, that was mine. And uh, I don't know how many dog walkers come by, stop, look at that, look up our panels, and go on. So it's, it's a good way to bring attention to it. Yeah. Another, again, I am like the luckiest guy. So it's uh, like three years ago, it's eight, seven, eight o'clock in the evening. I get this phone call. It says, uh, I want to give $75,000 to Solar I was like, I can't take your money. <laughs> I'm not incorporated, I'm not a 501, I'm not nothing. But hold that thought. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, you're going to lock on news. And I, I, I contacted another, like, uh, you know, greenie organization. And I said, well, can you kind of launder this money for me? <laughs> and, uh, they're like, yeah, you can. Like, we can, but we're going to take a cut of it because they're going to pay their staff. And that's what's great about Solar Ripsy. I have no staff, right? So there's no overhead. And so I think about it a little bit more. And I came up with this idea that uh, I just went through Ripsy kind of mentally. I said, I, I picked out, I think, 15 different nonprofits in Ipsland. And I put together a little proposal. I said, okay, here's a picture, you know, here's a picture of the roof. I picked the organizations that have the building and have a self-facing roof. I picked uh, 15 of them. I put down their mission statement and I kind of scored it. I said, you know, this one's got really good sol uh, solar exposure, but like bad public exposure, you know, they're like on a side street. This one has really good public exposure, you're on a main, you know, a main street, but you know, it's a west facing roof or something like that. Put all this together. I meet with the donor, he says, uh, you can't give me the money. But let's pick some nonprofits and you can just write the check right to the nonprofit. The donor picks out six of them. Actually, there was five originally. She changed it to six, so she went from 75 to uh, $92,000. I got six projects. I, I bid them out to three different contractors. So I got economics of scale. The contractors loved it because they're doing six projects all within a mile of each other. Um, there's zero overhead. It's every dollar that the donor gave went to the roof. The nonprofits loved it because if you give a nonprofit a bunch of money and say put solar on the roof, the first thing they got to do is they got to figure out how to do it, right? So the donor, like the school, they said this is fantastic because they get a check and a quote. They take the check, they give it to the contractor, they're done. I'm the grease. I, I I I make sure everybody is uh, happy with solar, understand solar, and. Uh, if there's any questions, you know, and I, I'm actually helping the contractor too. It was uh, John Wakeman from Sure Energy. And uh, this was a fantastic project, a fantastic model. And, and as Stephen pointed out to me in the past, uh, giving solar to nonprofits is amazing because it's an annuity, right? And also, you know, if, if, I'm a, uh, if I'm a nonprofit and I want to uh, have some event, right? I, it's easy to run, to, to raise money have some event and everybody yells, yeah, that's great. It's really hard to raise money to say, yeah, can you pay my electric bill? You know, so that's why solar is fantastic, right? It's, a, it's an event, you can raise money for it, everybody says, ah, this is great. And then next, for the next 30 years, you just lower your operating costs. So this is a great way to do it.
this is a really good model that, that needs to be replicated. And then if you can monetize the, uh, the tax credit, that's even better. Uh, I finally put it on my house, and um, <laughs> Home Power is my favorite magazine. I don't know if everybody knows, but they, they just went out of business. Uh, but it was, it was good, and uh, I, I, I submitted a couple of small articles to them in the past, and I finally said, you know, can I do one? And they, they kind of liked it. They're like, yeah, the, the guy who, the, the solar, the guy, the solar guy doesn't have solar on his house, right? So I finally put it on my house. <laughs> and my friends always point out my cordless drill. <laughs> And so that was good. And another good thing about magazines is uh, they paid me. So I made a couple hundred bucks. And the Google video, I'm actually an actor now. And I got like $1,800 for, for being in that Google video. So this is all, if you, if you publish in videos in magazines, sometimes they'll pay you and then that's money that you can then use to, uh, to keep your, your projects going. Uh, yeah, another report, right? So we're just popular. Uh, I forget who this was, but they wanted somebody, uh, the Mock Foundation funded somebody to make a report that says, give me a sense of what's going on in Michigan's communities with solar. They picked seven communities, uh, they picked us, and they made this great report, and then they uh, they published it. And I looked at it, and I was like, this is fantastic, because that's it. <laughs> so out of, the, uh, out of all the communities, you know, Ipsy was shown as to have the, the most solar. So again, it's just never saying no. What happened with this report? No problem. <laughs> it, it's worked. And then here's something that didn't work. And I, I, again, you just talk to people, you get ideas. My, my local library, and I think everybody's local library, has access to different databases. There's one called US Research USA or something like that. And it's amazing. It's a database of like everybody in the nation, like 300 million names. And it has things like uh, the value of their house, which is kind of interesting. And some other things. And so I was like, okay, let's let's look through this database. And I said, tell me anybody who has a million dollar house within five miles of its land. <laughs> there's actually a lot. <laughs> uh, there's actually there was like 200 some names. If, if you take husbands and wives and combine them, it turned out to be a list of about 80 people. I was like, I'm going to write these people and say, hey, you know, we want Ipsy to have a good image so that we look good next to your house, right? Let's make solar. Let's make Ipsy a solar destination so you can say. But you live next to the solar destination. Sent out 80 letters. That's actually uh, 100 bucks or so out of my pocket. No reply. <laughs> so that doesn't work. Um, and the donor was so happy with our project. She gave us another 25. Uh, and then this is where my uh, I was introduced to Rob Rapson from uh, Charthouse Energy. And uh, because this was a big project, we had to bid it out. And that's when I learned about monetizing the tax rate. So if I'm, a, uh, if I'm a homeowner and I'm paying taxes, right? I put solar on my house and I write 30% off of my taxes. If I'm a nonprofit, I don't have any taxes to write that 30% off of. So instead of just buying the material, and this was a volunteer project again, lowering the cost has always been kind of my mantra, because that's kind of always been the stumbling block. It's kind of lower the cost. Monetize the tax credit, use volunteer labor. Um, Whatever you can do to kind of lower the cost to, to get these projects going. Uh, this one was big, so the city had to, uh, this is our fire station, uh, had to bid this out, and that's when I met Rob. And Rob says, instead of just buying your material from McDalton UK, you lease it from me. And I lease it, we do a, what's called a pre buyout lease. So I, instead of giving McDalton, uh, McDalton UK 100 bucks, I give Rob 70 bucks. and. We get the panels, we get full value, we put them on the house, and, uh, on the fire station, everything looks like we did it, but they don't actually own title to it until six years later. But I just saved a third of the cost of the project. So monetizing the tax credit, I had um, a dozen or so volunteers up here again. Uh, Wayne was pointing out that he, he was on the road. Uh, that this would never happen in Ann Arbor. <laughs> and again, we have a friendly city, we put up a barrier around the edge. Uh, we told people, don't be an idiot, you know. Um, and a dozen people put that up in seven hours. And we had the firemen up there, we had the mayor up there, we had the fire chief up there. And forget solar, I mean, this was just a fun day. I mean, it, it was like an Amish farm raising, you know. We're having lunch, kids are, you know, talking, it was just fun. Um, and this is another, uh, 
This is a big project. You remember way back when DTE wanted to put uh, solar arrays on big fields? And uh, we have a seven acre lay, uh, no, land kill, if anybody's interested, uh, at the exit of 183. So when you come off the highway, exit 183, if you look to the right, there's a big patch of woods. That's because it's, a, it's, a, it's an old dump and you can't build anything on it. So I hear about this DTE uh, RFP and I hook up <laughs> the city with a solo contractor. We put together a bid, give it to DTE, and they say, this is great. Right along I-94, seven acres, they love it. Uh, we're moving along and then it kind of stalls. Never happens, never happens. And I hear they're gonna put uh, this giant array over at the Ann Arbor Airport. And I'm like, hey, what? And then that was so funny because the Ann Arbor Airport people said, no way, we don't want this, we hate solar. <laughs> and I got the city here who loves solar as an ideal site, and so I'm, I will say I pestered TT a little bit too much. So I, I, kept, <laughs> I kept pestering uh, Wayne Harwood. I'm sorry, Dave Harwood. And finally, he sent me an email back. Says, Thanks for your numerous emails. <laughs> <laughs> we will come back to Gypsy and find a new location. So they came back. Uh, our city uh, manager worked with them. And then this is another fantastic deal. So if you head out on uh, North River Street, we've got a cemetery. We've got this ancient old cemetery. Um, and it's got this giant field to the north. Luckily, it slopes down a little bit. And they're not going to use it for the next 40 years or something like that. And uh, they were able to lease the land to DTE for this project. So this is 800 kilowatts. Um, and, and, and the cemetery is dying for money. Uh, and they love it, right? So, so they have this giant solar field that they can't see, but they're getting uh, you know, money every year to, to, keep the, to do maintenance on the buildings that are there. And uh, uh, and it, uh, Rob and I are now we worked on a couple of projects. We're now working. We're finishing up the, uh, the Department of Energy has a Sunshot project, and we did a couple of cool projects there. We're finishing that up. Um, and then fifty big rooks. This is another thing that kind of worked. <laughs> has anybody used Google Sunroofs? Couple of people. Everybody should go to Google Sunroofs. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Google.com slash sunroof. And you type in an address and it'll tell you how good your roof is for solar. And so I'm like, okay, I, I fly over Ypsilanti, right? Just I open up Google Maps and I'm like, show me some big roofs. And so I'm just randomly picking the biggest roofs I can find in Ypsilanti. A little information here the, the biggest one in Ypsilanti is 13 acres. It's uh, an old Ford plant. Uh, uh, so anyways, I get a list of the 50 biggest roofs in Ypsilanti, I run them all through Google Sunroofs, I get a nice, you know, one pager, and I work with the city to have the city send a letter to these 50 home, uh, businesses, they're all businesses, and it, it's a letter saying, hey, Ypsi's doing great stuff in solar, you should do Ypsi, you should do solar, here's what your roof looks like for solar, call one of these contracts. And I sent them the GLREA list. And, uh, and I said, and then also come to this informational meeting. I have an informational meeting, and uh, two people showed up. So two out of 50 is actually not too bad, but we still haven't been able to turn those projects yet. Uh, they're both nonprofits, so we're still working on it. And that's kind of a good idea to try. Uh, again, so we, uh, we had some successes, and so now I'm like, well, let's get the word out, right? And again, I don't want to write to the solar. Magazine. I want to write to Firehouse Magazine. You know, who would have known that there's a Firehouse Magazine? And again, all these people are dying for content. So you just write an article, and boom, we're in, uh, we're in Firehouse Magazine. And then I did write one for uh, Solar Today, so we're in that magazine. And then uh, I had another friend say, uh, you should go for this Solar Soul Spark Award. I'm like, sure, why not? <laughs> Let's go. And, and again, if you just do the label up, the city would never do this because it would take somebody's time. I just kind of picked away at this list. You, pick, you meet all these criteria, they give you an award. So we got that award. And then we, uh, this was actually kind of funny too. I, I said, okay, we got this award. Who from the city wants to come with me to get, to get this award? I want a photo op, right? I want a picture on, the, on a roof in New York. You know, that's the Empire State Building. 
uh, in this ward. Nobody from the city can go because there's no money in the budget to get these up four thousand. And so I was like, okay, well, I'll, for my day job, I fly a lot. I got frequent flyer miles. I'll, I'll, I'll buy your ticket. They said, we can't do that because we're city officials and we can't take funds. I'm like, great. So I found uh, Ann Brown. Ann Brown is a, is a past city council representative. I said, you want to go to New York for the day? And she's like, sure. <laughs> so frequent flyer miles, we fly to New York. We have lunch, we get our picture taken, we fly home. <laughs> it was worth it for that picture. Uh, this is the, the, uh, the Sunshine Challenge that we're working on now. And uh, so now we're in the present time, and uh, we want another award, right? This is another one. So we, when we started the Sunshine Project, they sent out an award saying, there's this original thing, all you applicants, uh, there's this Smart City Connect Award, and I get this on the day that it's due. And I'm like, I'll give it a shot, right? So I, I fill up. We just finished the firehouse project. I said, let's let's talk about it and uh, submitted it. And what do you know? We won. <laughs> and this is uh, compliments of my wife and Steve's uh, Steve's wife, uh, harvesting perpetual life. So did you know that there's a magazine called uh, Cemetery? Cremation magazine. <laughs> we are now published in that magazine. <laughs> Harvesting perpetual life. <laughs> they loved it. They thought it was great. I don't know how many people read this, but <laughs> and this was another one of my, uh, my my great moments here is I'm, I keep surfing the waves and I'm just not, I just can't my wife says you just can't turn it off. <laughs> This comes from Environment America, right? So I stumbled across this list that talks about shining cities, and they say if your city has um, uh, more more watts per capita, you think of the total watts of solar in your city divided by your population. If you're above 50, you're like really cool. You're like, you're a shining what do they call it, a solar star. And so after the after the fire at the, uh, the cemetery, the firehouse. Next year after Steve's project, um, I do the map, and what do you know? We're better than San Francisco. <laughs> you know, so so again, we're playing with the numbers a little bit because we're twenty thousand people, but I mean that that's a bullet point on product, right? And and actually, I, I don't think it's too hard to move up. And actually, last night when I put this slide together, I was like, how much are we cheating here? And I looked up you know, the smallest one here, Burlington, Vermont, and there are forty thousand people. So we're kind of on a par with that. So there's, there's no reason why we can't start moving up this list. So that's, and if we get our thousand rows, we would actually be way up here. So that, that's my goal. We've got to get the thousand rows, we've got to be in the top five or something. And I, I can write them letters too, saying, hey, put us on your list. Uh, and it's kind of what I'm working on now. I, I kind of like the. Uh, the 50 Big Roof Project, but it was kind of uh, not analytical. I'm, right? I'm an engineer, I gotta do it analytically. And uh, our city website actually has a place where you can look up properties. You can type in somebody's name and it would tell you, you know, uh, the lot that they own, or the lots that they own. And I, got, I found out that with a little clever uh, wild carding, I can do multiple queries and dump everybody's, <laughs> everybody's name and address. Actually, all I need is their address. So I now have a database of everybody's all the addresses in Ypsilanti. And I'm writing a program so I can automatically feed them all through Google Sunrise. And so now I'll have a solar score for every building in Ypsilanti. And then I'm gonna sort that, find the top 100, and, and say, here's my hit list. And I'm gonna call them, or I'm gonna give them every solar contract for the state and say, you call them. Uh, this, this is the way to make it happen. Come on. <laughs> and everybody who works. Google Sunroof isn't in every community, so there's some rural parts that doesn't have a place. But I'm telling you, go to your city. You don't need names, you just need address. Just get a list of all the address. And I think you can even go to like voter records or something. I was thinking about this the other day. Voter records would have a name and an address to figure out what board you but I think. You could dump photo records addresses. And, and when I finished this program, I was actually writing the program two different ways. I was doing it the, the Linux, you know, computer science way, 
And then I learned about um, oh, what are they called? Mac, it's some kind of a macro inside Excel. And I think I'm going to do it that way because then anybody can do it. But once I figure that out, then I'll send it out. <laughs> um, and then anybody should be able to put all the addresses in an Excel spreadsheet, run my macro, and it should give you a score. What's your time for that? <laughs> <laughs> and I was funny. So when when Home Power, I, I had this in my this is like my next project, right? And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna write because I already told Home Power about this five years ago. They're like, well, yeah, well, tell us when it's ready, and we'll write an article about it. And I'm like, almost ready. And I thought, okay, this would be great. I get another couple hundred bucks. I go out of business. I was like, I got the screen on. Uh, all right, so that's kind of the end. Uh, I got ten more minutes for questions. Uh, never say no, and I, and I will say that this can really be bad sometimes. I went to uh, someone called me up in Detroit. I forget the organization. Um, I don't know how to explain this politely. But I go, I give a solo presentation, and they are asking the weirdest questions. One person says, "How does the radon in my basement affect the solar panels?" <laughs> and I was like, really trying hard to find some kind of connection. So, so you, you will spend a lot of time doing, uh, and, and a lot of times, this happens to me a lot, you know, some, some organization will say, we want you to speak at our meeting, and I'm like, great, and I, and I look at them, and I think it's going to be great, and I get there, and there's like three people. You know, I, I, I've driven a bell bill or something like that. Uh, so you just never know. So I, I try to say, you know, and you get 20 people, so it's worth my time. And I also try to stay really local to match my time. You know, people want me to go to all these different communities, and I would love to, but if I drive someplace that's an hour, and I have to drive back, that's two hours that I'm not doing solo. That's why I try to stay hyper-focused on, on local so I can maximize my, my time. So never say no. You never know what's going to hit. And you never know what, what you're going to what person you're going to hit that's going to talk to somebody that's going to talk to someone. When I started, I didn't know anything. Right? 2000, I, didn't, I never did it in 2005. Um, I, I started doing these presentations, and I, I tell you, this is the best way to learn. Is you say you're, you're a genius. <laughs> and you, you give a talk, and you convey everything you know, and then three people in the audience will say, Well, what about this? And you say, I don't know. <laughs> you write those down, you go home, you do the homework. Next time you give a talk, you know, those three things, you give your talk, and then somebody else says two questions, you know, and, and you just keep learning. I think this works for anything. You can be a llama farmer, you know, in a week. I'm just kind of giving a Uh Have projects ready, show them ready. It's always good to have projects ready in your pocket, because when that donor calls, you've got to be ready to hit them. Uh, make lots of friends. Solar Ipsy is way more than me. Solar Ipsy is this huge community. I can call people tomorrow, and I can have Call people up on a row help me put up solar. Uh, people are you know, hosting me on the website. Um, it's just, it's a man, I can't even count. It's, 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 the solar team logo was designed by graphic artists for free. And it's just amazing. Um, try not to preach to the choir. Don't talk to the, the, the greenies or solar people about solar. Talk to people who don't, don't know about it. Um, do something and talk about it. Uh, and most importantly, be lucky. All right, uh, any questions? Yeah. Does the building inspector in the next to give prospective builders a source? 